AI compute demand is now growing at more than twice the rate of Moore's Law, something that has never happened before in the history of technology. To simply keep up, the world must invest $500 billion every single year into building new data centers through 2030. That is half a trillion dollars annually, just to stand still. So what does this really mean for investors and for the future of global power, infrastructure, and wealth? Well, today I'm going to show you which companies stand to benefit and how to position yourself to profit from the once-in-a-generation technological shift not seen since the birth of the Internet. So let's break it down. Now, for decades, Moore's Law defined the pace of innovation, the number of transistors on a chip doubling roughly every two years. Now, Moore's Law is a long-standing observation about the pace of technological progress via computer chips. Now, it was proposed in 1965 by Gordon Moore, the co-founder of Intel. And what he noticed was that the number of transistors, which are the little tiny switches that process data, that could fit on an integrated circuit was doubling roughly every two years while the cost per transistor was falling dramatically. So, in simple terms, computers get twice as powerful every two years for about the same price. Now, for decades, this law accurately predicted the exponential growth of computing power, driving everything from the rise of personal computers to smartphones to cloud computing. But AI doesn't seem to care about laws. Over the past decade, the demand for AI compute has grown at double that rate, obliterating the old benchmark. So we have now entered a new era, one where computational power is advancing faster than hardware can evolve. Now in this world, compute power is the most valuable commodity on earth. By 2028, global data center spending is projected to hit $900 billion, driven by AI server growth, at a 41% CAGR. And the overall data center market is expanding at 23%, numbers almost unheard of for an industry once considered slow and stable. So this is not just ordinary tech growth. It is an industrial revolution of compute power. And behind the shiny headlines and record AI valuations hides a massive funding gap. So despite these billions we keep seeing in these daily AI deals, data centers have a shortfall, uh, roughly $800 billion in revenue shortfall to be exact. So to fund the infrastructure needed through 2030, the world will need roughly $2 trillion in new revenue. So the fact is this, data centers are the new oil. Whoever controls the compute controls the future. That's why Facebook and Google, and Amazon, and OpenAI are spending billions, if not trillions of dollars to get there. Now, the cost to build a single data center has gone vertical. Construction costs have surged 322% in just four years. In other words, it costs four times as much to build one today as it did in 2021. And that doesn't even include chips or servers. Just the buildings, the buildings alone are becoming some of the most valuable assets in the modern economy. This is a gold rush of compute. We are living through a modern-day digital gold rush. Right now, $40 billion worth of U.S. data centers are under construction, up more than 400% since 2022. Good old law of supply and demand. Demand surges, guess who's going to ask for more money? And so for the first time in American history, the value of data centers under construction is surpassing office buildings. And that, I think we can all agree, is a seismic shift in what society values most. From real estate to just raw processing power. There's just one problem, one I've been preaching on for the last six months, and that is that all this compute needs energy. Lots of it. By 2035, AI data centers will consume 1,600 terawatt hours of electricity roughly 4.5% of total global power demand. That is enough to power every home in the United States twice over. Power demand from AI infrastructure is on track to quadruple in just a decade. So we are not just facing a compute shortage. It's not like, eh, we could use a few more kilowatts. This is an all-out energy crisis. And all of this leads into two urgent questions. 
Number one, where will the money come from to fund it all? And two, where will the power come from to keep it running? So the answers are going to require a global mix of technology, policy, and innovation. And the world's most advanced economies are racing to find them. In my view, this is only the beginning. We are still very early in the AI revolution, albeit in the first run-up. But this is something that's going to play out over 5, 10, 20 years, just like the internet boom did, right? You go back to the 90s, sure, it was Cisco and AOL, and those stocks made these big booms, and it came crashing down. But look what's happened over the next 25 years. Facebook and Netflix and Google and Amazon, they reshaped the global economy. These are companies worth trillions of dollars that, for the most part, didn't exist 20, 25 years ago. Now, two breakthrough technologies are already emerging as the potential saviors of the AI era. These just so happen to be the two areas we have made the most money in 2025, and that is nuclear power and quantum computing. Now, obviously, our grid cannot handle these massive power demands, so we have to go to alternatives. Solar, wind, they work at certain times. There's transport issues. They, they require a lot of land. Uh, nuclear, on the other hand, fits the bill perfectly. Those plants can run 24-7 perfectly matching AI's insatiable, nonstop energy demands. It can also do so with a much smaller footprint, and despite what Spielberg would have you believe, do so pretty safely. At the same time, we've got quantum computing. Now, what quantum computing is doing is leveraging these qubits to perform operations exponentially faster than what traditional chips can do. So they're giving us a glimpse at what comes after Moore's Law. Now, I saw the CEO of one of the big quantum uh, computing companies in an interview last week who said that if the blockchain technology, and forgive me, some of this stuff is way over my head, but the computational measures they use for Bitcoin, right? The, the equation is simply has, has to solve to mine Bitcoin and complete those data blocks. If they use this new quantum computing formula, he estimates the power used in Bitcoin mining would decrease by a factor of 1,000. That's the level of advance we're talking about. And together, nuclear, quantum computing, these technologies could redefine the boundaries of computation and power supply. Now, there have been some big run-ups in the AI market over the last couple of years. Some of these stocks are no doubt overvalued, at least based on their current revenue and profits. But I am still not seeing behavior that shows me a bubble. Bubble behavior is defined as there is no price too high. It's when everyone is on board. And in fact, if you look at the fundamentals, some of the forward PE ratios are falling. I mean, the, the price to earnings multiple. So how much uh, profit that company makes per dollar you pay for the stock. So some of these companies, believe it or not, are actually getting cheaper even as their stock prices rise because the rate of increase in their sales and their profits is exceeding the rate of growth in the stock price. Now, the S&P 500's forward PE, one of the, the most fundamental valuation metrics we look at, is still only about half of what it was during the dot-com bubble peak. So this is signaling something kind of extraordinary, and that is that what we are seeing, although there are exceptions, is not just pure speculation. It is structural transformation. Will some of these AI stocks boom and go to zero and never come back? Absolutely. But some of them will be 10, 20, 50 times higher than they are today. And AI, artificial intelligence, has become the single largest investment trend of our lifetime. Today, AI accounts for nearly 40% of all S&P 500 capital expenditures. So that's, that's not hype. That's not what if. That is hard money flowing into infrastructure and chips and compute. The AI revolution is not coming. It is here. We are just getting started. Now, if history teaches us anything, it's that the world's greatest fortunes are made early by those who recognize the paradigm shift before the crowd. What we are in right now, I believe, is the infrastructure phase of AI, the picks and shovels era of this digital gold rush. 
So the big money to be made, in my opinion, is going to come from a couple of areas. Is NVIDIA going to be a top or four, uh, like a top company? Of course. But it's a $4 trillion company, folks. This thing's not going to keep doubling and tripling. Any, it, it, it's almost impossible due to its size. So the pick and shovel plays are here. Number one, data centers. These can be harder to invest in, although there are some REITs, real estate investment trusts, that invest strictly in these data centers. The other big area um, is energy production. So quantum, I'm, I'm sorry, nuclear, obviously a big one, SMR, OKLO, uh, GEV, a lot of these stocks surging, have been for the last six months. Many will go much, much, much higher over the next five, 10 years going forward. I also believe that there's going to be a big opportunity in solar. We're starting to see the solar ETF, TAN, break out like a multi-year stage one base. And, you know, as obviously we're putting a lot of money and a, and a lot of emphasis on the nuclear space, but that takes some time. We have zero nuclear plants currently under construction. It is much quicker to throw up a solar farm out in the middle of nowhere. And so I think what we're going to see is the government and private industry kind of throw in the kitchen sink at this energy crisis. And once the blackouts and the brownouts start coming in, they're going to go, all right, should we pull back AI? Do we want to rein these guys in and say, whoa, you can't run that hot. We're going to go ahead and let China and India and these other countries out, outpace us there. No, like Trump's never let that happen. So they're going to bring massive. So I, I think we're going to see, obviously, they're going to, they're going to you know, ramp up uh, the drilling and traditional uh, fossil fuels. We're going to see big pushes and a lot of red tape being cut in nuclear. We're also going to see big pushes to solar. They're just going to throw everything at it. So I think TAN, the solar ETF, uh, I think NLR, the nuclear ETF, and even just the general utilities ETF, which is XLU. Utilities, this utility sector is up 20% this year. We're talking about power companies, not a big growth area traditionally, okay? And then the third area is going to be the, these next-gen compute innovators, the, the quantum computing stocks. So the big ones right now are QBTS, which is D-Wave Quantum, QUBT, which is Quantum Computing Incorporated, IonQ, Rigetti, which is RGTI, LAM Research, ticker LRCX, and Coherent Corp, ticker COHR. The, these are some of the leading quantum stocks right now. I'm sure there's probably some smaller ones I'm missing, but these are so far the big players. Now, if you want broad-based exposure, again, there is an ETF for this, the ticker uh, QTUM. It's a Defiance Quantum ETF. It's going to be a basket of stocks holding probably all the ones I mentioned and a handful of others. It's a bit of a safer way to play the move. There's no right or wrong way to do this. My approach is if I'm actively trading, I'm looking for stocks to own for two, three, eight weeks, I want individual stocks. I want max leverage uh, in the form of singular companies that can make big moves. When it comes to longer-term investments, retirement accounts, I tend to stick to ETFs. I don't want to bet it all on one stock, so I'll hold the quantum ETF. I own the nuclear ETF. I own the solar ETF. I own the gold mining ETF. Um, and it's, to me, just a, a less volatile way to get exposure to those leading areas. But these are quickly becoming the new titans of industry. And while I won't give you any personalized financial advice, I believe it wise to get exposure to one, if not all, of these areas.